Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamer. I'm a first year MBA student at MIT Sloan. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Peter Fadi. Uh, he's the director of uh, Learning Systems Design and Technology graduate program at Southern Illinois University. Please. I've got the mic here. Yeah, I'll use that. <clears throat> uh, putting you in the role of being a, an MLB or NFL general manager or a, a um, Power Five um, athletic director, and your head coach has just come to you and say, you've got to have this. This is a game changer. Competitive advantage to be gained or lost if we don't jump in on virtual reality. The difference maker is this guy right here, the Oculus. So they set up a demo. You put on the Oculus Rift head-mounted display, and wow! It's just like you're there. It's just like you're standing next to the starting quarterback in a seven-on-seven -seven drill. That's what the video is. Your mind starts racing. This could be the team taking the field. Wouldn't that be great for recruiting? I mean, you're right there with the team. Because that's where you go right away. But now we're right of wow. In law enforcement, they talk about left of bang, the moments before the shot. Now we're right of wow. Now what do we do with this? Now we have to really look at this as a coaching and learning tool. Put those other things aside. Put the game day experience, the fan experience. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the coaching implications of VR, virtual reality, and it really grabbed in the NFL. In the last season, in less, than a, in less than a year, nine teams, by my count, could be more because they're kind of secretive about it, by my count, bought in VR systems. And when I say bought in, I mean 150,000 a year and over. We're not talking about a, a cheap buy-in there at all. So if you're looking at your return on investment, you're looking at your cost benefit on that, you better be seeing some pretty sizable benefits to, uh, to balance that. Um, here's exactly what we get. We get a, uh, a set of about six GoPro cameras in an array that capture the 360. Now, those individual videos still need to be stitched together into the, the, into the 360 uh, virtual reality for that. Uh, some people assume that we are taking an egocentric view, that you're going into the eyes of the quarterback. But as you can see, the array doesn't have a helmet on. Your view, which is where the camera is, is next to the quarterback. So you're standing right next to the quarterback. Hmm. That's kind of cool. In fact, one of the early adopters of it, the Arizona Cardinals, talking to their video guy, because that's one of the things that you guys, uh, as GMs, they sometimes don't think of uh, talking to the video guys, but they should. Uh, and they say Carson Palmer really likes to use this, and his favorite thing is to stand next to himself. Looking at himself, he can check his footwork. You know, he can check to see with where he was. Was he giving anything away with his helmet movement or his shoulder movements before then? That's primarily what he does. He, he's self-coaching. Somebody who's that veteran, he's a, he's a self-coach in there. So that's a pretty sizable gain from him. Now the number two and the number three quarterback can also stand there and look right next to, shoulder to shoulder, to Carson Palmer, who's getting all the reps, of course, against the ones. And uh, the three, especially, um, is off on scout team. So the, there's sizable advantages. Uh, th this, is, this is what then the, the, the football player thinks of that. The first time I looked at it, I said, this is, this is it. When I put it on and you see the real live environment, it's incredible. You're getting that point of view from a spot where you're going to stand on the field and you can see everything and where everyone's lined up and the indicators of what they're going to show and what kind of defense they're going to have. And actually nope, feel the like, tether. yeah, I'm kind of immersed in this space and, and, and I feel like I'm there. I want them to actually feel like they're playing the position. All right, so there you see both the promise and the relatively limited actual delivery of what you get. It's a matter of what you want out of that. And so, yeah, you can look left to right. That's the power of that. You are on a practice field, but back when we were in blue sky, you were immediately thinking to, oh, this is how they'll prepare for their next opponent. Not really. You might prepare during, this is what they call a seven on seven drill, because they won't let the video guys put this out there during a full team drill, because the array might get hit. 
you might hurt the camera, or more importantly, at least at the NFL level, you might hurt a player. What we really want to understand as we try to, to really see what this is, is first of all, to kind of put out of our mind that this is something completely new. We've been looking at VR and, 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 and football in particular for a long time. I visited the University of Michigan's quarterback simulator cave, cave which is a three-sided, you know, so it's the size of this thing here with rear, rear projection on there, and a guy is able to sit in there, look left, look right, not with the goggles, but also not with the photorealistic display. It's animated display. So this, this is the thing that's crossing over right now. We see the animated display versus the video which is interpreted as reality. Again, this is not unprecedented. 3D MVP was being developed by the, uh, in, in um, conjunction with the Ravens when Coach Billick was there. I talked to their video guy when Billick left. This went in the closet. It's, these, are, these are nice products. There's nothing wrong with them. But they weren't somehow right for the opportunity. And the main thing is that they, they didn't fit. It's nothing to do with the fidelity of the VR, one of these other questions. It's how does this fit within a, a, a football game week preparation schedule? It doesn't have a lot of time in it. So there's, there's a number of things we need to, to, to see how they can fit in. If you're going to make a good decision as that GM uh, about whether you're going to bring in this technology, are you going to hold and wait? Are you going to get now, try and get an advantage? Where are you going to, where are you going to place yourself on that? Well, one of the, these initial questions is the notion of training versus entertaining. We really want to understand that these are different things. Now, the, the biggest player in the, in the coach analysis field is this Exos. We're talking about a $250,000 Play Action product. Simulator VR is a virtual reality environment that allows the athlete to be fully... Now, here's the real difference maker. He is moving. He's acting. He's moving within that. And that's, that's the real thing there. This is true VR. We could actually make an argument uh, if you're looking at it academically, that what we're talking about with the 360 isn't really true VR because you don't move and, and, and have that reflected in the, in the display. It's a read only. That one that we just saw, you saw the quarterback, he's up there, he's, he's throwing a pass, he's in the game. Much more compelling, but is it lead, lead to better learning? That's what we need to know because we're not looking at entertaining, we're looking at training. We're not looking at fan experience, we're looking at players who already have the skills to throw the ball around the field. Uh, sometimes we're looking at, at learning in a more basic kind of way. This is something that's intended really for high school quarterbacks. You know, how do we turn schemes into, into schema? You know, we've got football schemes, your alignments, and by, by schema I mean your model, your mental model of the game, your geography of the of the game, your game sense. Now that's what we hope that we're really getting to. And actually, I've got some colleagues who are going up tomorrow to Giant Stadium, and they've got a uh, high school um, uh, combine up there, and they're going to be giving them this test. So this is what we'd call declarative knowledge. You know, just basic uh, uh, formation, personnel group, that sort of thing. Just knowledge. But we also want to do something win-loss. And so this is procedural or applied knowledge, your task here is to say, okay, boom, from the defensive perspective, they gained four yards or not. So maybe you could have named those formations. You could have named what the offensive formation was and the defensive formation. Maybe you can get all 20 of these, who wins, you know, who wins that play without getting the others. We don't know. That's, that's why, you, you know, it's a, it's a good experiment because we don't know how it's going to come out yet. These are the things we need to know. We need to know What's the relation between that kind of declarative knowledge, that book knowledge, and that field knowledge? And then we have a QB test, too, <clears throat> which uses a very inexpensive VR tool, Go Army Edge. And here, the quarterback doesn't have control. He doesn't even have the left to right control. The producer has already given that to him, but he's given him a chance to look left and right, scan the formations, and make his decision where he's going to deliver the ball. Again, that's a test mode. The one thing about football, ahead of some other sports, and we'll talk about other sports. This is not all about football, but it's mostly about football because that's where it's blowing up right now. And football has the budgets to jump in for something like this. A lot of other sports don't. Some sports blink at $250,000. Big time football, 
college and NFL, doesn't even swallow hard. That still doesn't mean that you don't want to, as the GM, be making good return on investment decisions. The one thing that football really gives us is the end zone view, which we've had for a very long time. Partly because football is a play, a play, a play, a play. Coaches see, and, uh, and, and you, you'll see it on TV sometimes, the, the 22 in. They see everybody. And so even now, <clears throat> you know, however many 17 cameras on the Super Bowl, the coaches will say they can see everything that they need see, to see for analysis from these two shots. First, a sideline view of the play, and then the end zone view of the play that focuses on the line. Now, how far do we need to go? Do we need to go inside the helmet? Or does it what now familiar to all of us as the Skycam? Yeah, I, I love Skycam. Skycam is the greatest. And it looks an awful lot like that EA Sports. <clears throat> well, now you're a little bit lower than that end zone one. Just a little bit lower. You couldn't see the safeties on that. Now you can. You know, is this good film for, for instructing a, a quarterback off of? Or a quarterback preparing for the next opponent? I think it is. But what people would say is, okay, that's nice for practice. You know, or that's, they shoot that in games for ESPN, but they don't have it available in practice. Well, I was just down at the uh, Combine last week in Indianapolis, and uh, they've got some new products, including something that lets you shoot your own version of Skycam in practice. So it's kind of interesting that the, the, the VR, the 360 video has, 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 has cut through like a, like, a, like a speedboat cutting through the bay out here and left a wake in it, and all of a sudden people are much more aware than they used to be of, of camera angles. What does a guy really need to see in order to process that in the way that, that you want to? Uh, that's also meant the use of drones. And people kind of laugh anytime drones comes up, but I, as a video coordinator, I used to either be on a 30 foot to 40 foot lift like that, or send students I was responsible up for it. And I don't know if, how many of you know of the accident at Notre Dame, but a couple years ago, one of these things went over. So we can start replacing that with a drone, and they can give the ultimate football coaches analysis shot, which is straight overhead and paint X's nose on their helmets. That's what the coaches want to see. But you know, that's not what's best for player training. That's what we're really crossing over here, the idea of what's good for analysis versus what's good for training. So at the combine there, here's some companies then who are coming in to that wake, filling in that wake with some very savvy video products. Here you'd go ahead and shoot with the GoPro, but you're not using the whole array. You're not 360, you're just 180. Not that much football actually happens behind you that you can do anything about. So this is a desk. Somebody sits at the desk, they've got the GoPro, and they can look left and right. You know, that's the big thing on that. It's not video you can look at. You've got a parabolic screen, and then they've got a nice one where you can, you can put your whole squad in there. You could have your, your offensive line, look at your, your, your Second string offensive line is now looking over the shoulder of each one of their first string teammates as they run through the, uh, run through the drills. In fact, they can even put you in a, uh, if, you, if you've got enough coin, into not just a cave now, but a dome. You know, 360 dome. You look in every direction, there's the sky, there's the grass, there's whatever's behind you. Pretty amazing stuff. So this takes us back. This looks pretty familiar. This looks kind of a lot like that where we started out in the University of Michigan. Uh, what you're basically making a choice from here is do you want that person to be able to, to act within that environment, to move within that environment? On that first video clip that showed the 360 video and the second part of it, you might have noticed that I said, watch the tether because it's, it's a tethered thing. We're, we're not dealing with the, you know, the iPhone on the, on the glasses. We're dealing with a tethered uh, to a, a gaming computer Oculus Rift. You know, so you're choosing between the 360 video and the compelling nature of that, because it really does feel like you're there, versus the animation that you have so much more control over. So you've got the realism versus the control. Realism versus control. And as you would decide, you're, th these are going to affect what, what technology you buy. So you need some good answers. And asking people what they like is a really bad question. Don't ask the people what they like. What you need to do is discover what they need to learn. You know, last thing to do, yeah, they, they like the, 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 the video. Sure, they all like it. You know, this is something that a, a fellow I know had on the market um, five, seven years ago. 180 
And you could move left and right, but instead of looking left and right like this with a tracker, you had to do it with a joystick or with the left and right arrows. So now you had a, a fidelity issue, physical versus functional fidelity. Very important concept as we look at, at how we're going to maximize uh, our, our virtual reality experience. Physical meaning it looks real. So that 360 video, obviously, is very high on that one. Functional fidelity means, though, that the, the math is right. So you know, if, you're, if you're using this to, and, 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 and you want to model Von Miller coming off the edge, whacking the quarterback, you, know, you need to have the, uh, the, the, the sense of timing of that. You need the functional fidelity. Do you really need to, to have a visual image of him? Maybe not. What you really need is that instead of the usual three seconds on a seven-step drop, you've got two and a half. That's what the guy's got to speed up his clock. An NFL quarterback will talk to you about their internal clock. Because they can't see these guys, and they don't want to look at those guys because they're coming after you hard. You really don't want to look at them. You learn to put them aside. But that's part of it. You know, that's part of what would repay. Maybe you've got those second or third string quarterbacks that don't get in very often, and so they're not good at being able to just put out of mind these really big guys who are both a lot bigger than you and a lot faster than you and being paid a lot of money to take your head off. Uh, maybe that's where the, re the, the physical fidelity of it might pay off. If you're a veteran quarterback, you mastered that skill of putting that out of mind long ago. You need to master your, your two and a half seconds versus three second drop with uh, Von Miller off the edge. So we're going to other sports, and, and now we're looking at ones that are not products. These are research type projects. So, you know, okay, a, a fidelity issue. Does the background make a difference? Nice steady there? No, it doesn't make any difference. You know, here we're in a lab where they're doing a rugby skill, a rugby throwing skill. So you've got the action part of it. Now, these are ones that are incorporating the action. This is not read only, this is interact. This is true, uh, a true interaction with that. From the outside, it's a jump. This is one, heck, this is from like 2008. So we've got the rugby images, guy, and you can see he's got the, the um, uh, reflectors on him so that they can re record that, put it the into the game, and he really is, is practicing the throw in. This, on the other hand, you'd call a medium or low fidelity one. We're using something like a uh, connect or whatever to, to judge that motion. So you get the idea of the motion, it's coming in there. But obviously, that was a lot lower in physical fidelity than the one that we saw before. The real question in your mind would be, how's the functional fidelity? Does the guy's motion like this and what he's doing actually deliver the ball and the kind of timing in which they, you know, in rugby where the guy gets up on the other guy's shoulders and all like that? That'd be fun to bring to the NFL. You know, man, we wouldn't have, the extra point wouldn't be so automatic. Um, one of the things when you had the uh, when you when you were looking at the sky through your your goggles there, one of the things you were you were thinking about that your coaches thinks about is you can you can prepare for your next opponent or you can review your last game, but that's not so because they're not going to let you take and put your 360 degree camera out there in the middle of the field. Uh, but this is a European company and they 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 they've got uh, pickups video pickups around the stadium, but other companies who are here are doing it with uh, with. Um, uh, sensing on the players, and you can follow them, and you can produce, you could reproduce that game. You could reproduce last week's game if you accept an animated iconic representation versus a photorealistic. Is that a training thing or is that a, an entertaining thing? You know, do we need to entertain players? We've got guys who are trying to figure out how to get rid of the ball without having their head taken off. Do we need to motivate them to do that? Or are they going to do that just to keep their head? Now, at the Consumer Electronics Show, then we get a different version. So here's the 360 VR from the same company that's doing the NFL ones. And this is a fan experience one. And um, very compelling from that. I've got no argument there. I think the fan experience is a great way to use this, this type of stuff. And in the lab, where it's, we, our work is a little more black and white, here, the guy is getting rid of the tether by putting the computer and the, the connections in a backpack. It looks like Ghostbusters, if anybody remembers that. And he's actually trying to move to tackle this guy coming, coming at him. Not, not a lot of um, physical or psychological fidelity, but a lot of uh, functional fidelity. And then we kind of change to a, a, a different kind of sport. 
different kind of sports action. We're not talking about patterns of play. We're talking about perceptual cognitive. Those are things like return of serve in tennis, blocking a kick in, in, in soccer, a, a penalty kick, or of, cor of course, uh, uh, cricket bowling or pitch recognition, my area of particular study. You know, these are areas where you've got less than a half a second for the entire thing. It's just, this is a little different. That quarterback has a nice, generous three seconds. So this is a, a company that's now showing a 360. Again, you can see the cave type environment, at, also at Consumer Electronics Show. Wow, pretty realistic. Yeah, I felt like that was coming right in there. Although we want, you know, we, we, we might be something that, that can simulate that, like this is a pitching machine. It's a video pitching machine, video image, and a ball's fired out. There's a pitching machine behind there. So you can see those are kind of digital and analog versions of the same thing. But the science of this really is that to be able to hit a major league splitter, which this guy's throwing out, you need to recognize it in the first 10, 10 to 20 feet out of hand, one third ball flight. That's where your decision has to be made. So. Can we just work on that? And I have a poster out in the hall where I talk about my experience using this video occlusion method. So that you're giving a point of view and you're cutting off the video and the, uh, the trainee or the subject in a research mode has to guess what the, what the pitch is. You know, so this is what it looks like in a training mode. Okay, you gotta guess what it is, fastball strike? Uh, no, okay, let's see the replay. Nope, uh, that shows this is gonna be a curveball. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, you know, next. And so we're, we're getting a lot of uh, repetition with instant feedback and variety. So now you gotta call the pitch, somebody call it. Curve, okay, curve, ball or strike? Yeah, if the honest people are gonna call ball, because that one came popping up. That's what you need to retrain your eyes to see. Wade Boggs used to say he could feel his eyes bob in his head, that's how he knew it was the hanging curve. He was giving himself a mental cue that would overcome what his eyes were telling him, knowing his eyes were lying to him. So that, you know, we can, we can, we can talk about neurological, but when we talk about neurological remapping, we really get back to drill and practice, the greatest training technique of all time. Maybe you get a chance to hit these. <laughs> I don't think there's anything you can do that can get you ready to hit that. Uh, who knows who that pitcher was? Doc Gooden, okay. Yeah, that goes, that goes back a little ways. Who was the batter? Uh, I think it was Davey Lopes. But, you know, this is the point, that we, we've got these different things to consider. And these are all right of wow. You really want to think about what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do with this? Do you need that realism? Do you need a, a, a focus right here? Are you, is this a practice sort of thing, you know, really breaking down and, and considering such things as whether you're using it for general training of quarterbacks, if you're a quarterback guru, or preparing for the next opponent, whether you need to have the action or if what you're trying to learn is the decision and you can divorce it from the action, which makes it much more efficient, headset versus cave, 360 video versus 3D animation, which right now is the... It, it, these are products that go this way, and they have vastly different uh, price tags. So your GM decision based on there. And, and uh, the, the fidelity issues, and those are really important because the assumptions are made that more realistic equals more better learning. That is an entirely unproven and very expensive assumption. In fact, the, 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 the research done in that area, and in my, our, our job is to do better research in that area answer some of these questions for, the, for, you, uh, for you curious GMs in the audience. You know, think about what type of skill you're trying to train, how do we work on that. Let's work right of wow and make good decisions about how we use what promises to be a really spectacular, potentially game-changing technology for sports coaching. And that, uh, that concludes that, so I guess we have uh, Questions or observations, I'm perfectly fine with either one of those. Um, I think that it's important because you're trying to pick up cues like a skinny wrist, some, something like that. It's got to be good enough to pick those up. I worry that in the, if, when they turn it into VR, 
you lose some of those cues. You know, you lose the cue, uh, maybe it's the, the leg lift, there are certain things in there. Uh, a lot of times that expert can't tell you exactly what it is that they're reading, but we've got some of these occluded clips are cut off right out of hand, and we get guys who are guessing 70, 75% when chance is 33%. They'll still tell you they're guessing. Um, but it doesn't need to be like, I don't think that it needs to be 3D, because we don't have stereoscopic vision at 20 yards. When you start getting in close, like the one where you had the hockey goalie, well, now that's where you get the payoff, because you really do kind of need to know what's going around behind you. you know, you, and it's all in here and close. That's, I think, where you get the payoff. At, at 20 yards out here, no. You need to see the cues you need to see. Yes, exactly. If you, if you remember back to the video clip that we showed of the exosystem, the question was on using reflectors and that sort of thing to, to capture that, that motion and put it in there. And actually, that exos company had one beyond what we looked at, where they had a whole big room, and they captured all of that. And then, um, ultimately, it was of more value to the strength and conditioning people than it was as a skills trainer. And you know, they, they continue to use a, a lot of that. We had some interesting things with you know, smaller apps and you know, trying to get at those things in the environment. Um, that starts to go off into a different kind of domain. Does it need to be realistic for that? You need the functional fidelity. What you really need there, right, is that kind of, you need to have it captured and you need to know exactly what those stresses are and those things and you probably care less about what it looks like. So the question is about audio and other senses. This is really good. The people who did the 360 video were really savvy because they, they recorded stereo audio and you put stereo headset, headset on. Now, that could have been done at any time. We could set up a camera at any time next to a quarterback and record it with, in this way and have done that. We just didn't think of it before. Sometimes that's the way with technology. You get, you get something that really comes in and kind of changes things, and then you start looking for, wow, we could, we could backfill our old methods with this. But that makes a huge difference, the, the, the sound, because if those big uglies are coming after you, there's a, you, you can hear the sweat. I mean, that, that is definitely part of fooling your senses that you were actually there. Part of it is if they start moving, though, that's when you have to have the garbage can nearby. If the video wasn't moving and now you start moving when it wasn't there, or even worse, if the video moves, like for football, if you were trying to depict a, a quarterback's um, zone read where he's, 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 he's got to run and then read the end and then pitch, if you're watching the VR glasses and all of a sudden it starts moving this way, This is a great question. When I, one of the uh, video coordinators I talked about posed this same issue, that is, are you actually going to give up practice time? Because practice time, even in the NFL with the, with the player contract, is just as limited as it is in NCAA, where you've got 20 hours of contact time. Are you going to give your contact time over to picking up some video for some later use, or, you know, for your playbook, your VR playbook, or whatever? So that's, so that's so critical in there. That's part of that fitting in piece. So I, in fact, talking to the Ravens guy. They've, they've, they've declined, they've looked at a number of different systems and they, they're not now. Now they're, they're struggling a little bit and say we're going to make it work on the field, we've got that limited practice time, that's 100% focus on there. So they're making a good decision. Is asking if the price advantage were the same, if we take price out of it, how would you be thinking about it? And as my consultant to you, as the GM sitting in the audience, is to do exactly that. Take the price completely off the table. You're going to ultimately make a cost-benefit analysis. The cost is going to change. It could be different tomorrow than it is today. Exos, the big player in that, is coming out with their own version of the, one, of the uh, 360 that's going to work in their system at, at you know, a fraction of the price. It, all of a sudden, there's going to be some competition. That's going to change things fast. That's not the point. Not the point of what we're doing here anyway. The point of what we're doing here is exactly, as, as the fellow says, we want to understand what are those specific benefits. So I would, as hard as it is as a GM, I would start your decision process by taking money off the table, assuming they're all exactly the same, and then say, 
what approach here gives our, our players and coaches the tools they need to get better so we can win more games? We're not needing to entertain them. Yes and no. Yes, there's a value to the realism. When we show these pitches here, you see, it, it, it's, it's something that, that sometimes people kind of almost struggle with. They say, that's it? That's all there is to it? And say, yeah, we're going to test in the, in the research part of that and train pitch recognition by having you recognize pitches. There are other systems out there that are, have, have game-based and an animation coming at you, and you press the space bar to, you know. So what I value in any simulation, you've got three aspects of fidelity that you're interested in. You're interested in display, which is mostly what we're talking about. You're interested in input. You know, what's the fidelity of the input? I showed you the one where the guy had the, you know, had the 180 view, but you're doing it with the arrow keys. It didn't strike people. You know? and, um, and the other one is feedback. Display, input, feedback. So what I'm going to put my money in is dis display. I want to have a realistic display. It doesn't need to be 3D. It needs to be real pictures. On animations of pictures, no matter how good you think your algorithms are, when they go to VR, when you see the rugby ones, and that's where they've really done some nice research with this throw and drill and everything, they ultimately end up guessing. You know, and this is not a guessing thing. So I say put your realism right there. As far as the action, matching it with the action of hitting, this is very controversial in my area in sports science because there's people who say believe in direct perception and they would say, without the action, there is no learning. I'm saying if you can accept decoupling the perception action link, then you can really woodshed the, the perception part of it. We could get hundreds of, of pitches in the time that you could, you could get 10 in the batting cage. Um, so, you know, that it's where, where are you going to put your, I'm, I'm going to put my shekels in the display. I don't feel like you need the whole thing. But that's just that's my theory, and there are others who completely disagree. And they're saying it really has to be tied to that action in order for it to, to sink into the mind and learning. A more important way of thinking about that is probably not right or wrong, but where in the learning trajectory is that person? If the person's learning to hit, then you need this whole thing. If they know how to hit, they're a major leaguer or a college player, they know how to hit. What they need to know is what's coming so they can either adjust or take the pitch. But if that's really what your concern is, now you're getting to the one where you're saying, no, we really want to be able to track this. Maybe it's the one where you actually throw a football and it hits something. Or maybe it's, remember that throw in one where they, it was just, maybe you just pantomime it. Maybe we're not interested in the mechanics of actually throwing the ball. Maybe that's not where our quarterback who sucks is bad. He's like um, a lot of college quarterbacks come out and they've got to see the guy open. It's very hard for them to learn to throw into space and there's not a receiver there. So there maybe we go to the thing where you have to pantomime it. You know, you've got to do that. It's going to come into the game. The timing is there. Now we've got something matched. And that was a medium fidelity. Now we've got something matched to that, that type of learning trajectory and skill set that you're trying to work on. That's the thinking we want. Yes. Um, there's a company uh, that's got it. it. Actually, they presented here. They had a big presence at, um, at, at MIT Sloan a couple of years ago, a couple of Columbia guys, and they're really working with EEG, e -E measuring the brain waves. And it's like you can, they, they feel like they can spot the spike of, you know, arousal, spike of arousal there. Now, what's really interesting to me is, okay, the spike of arousal is not a big deal. You're going to get that. What I'm interested in is the spike of inhibition. Is there a marker for the inhibition where that, that skilled batter is somehow to say, yes, no? Or, you know, you can make the swing here. And my colleagues in Australia who study this uh, um, with a technique where you're using the video and together, you've got a space like right in, right in here, right before those hips open, where you can, you can sink a little bit more. You can reach that, that slider. And so you see somebody like a Josh Donaldson with that ballistic swing that he's doing, if he's not picking the ball in the first 10 feet, he's, he's a 200 hitter. 
And, and he wasn't born as the Josh Donaldson he is. So you know that his progression through there was, was mastering this coming out, because there's a lot of action in here. There's a lot of action in that, in that load. He's got to be picking that early. You know it. Uh, um, the augmented reality, like we saw the one where it was kind of from our quiz, where it, it showed like what the, what the position, so here is the tailback, here is the tight end and all. So you could certainly see where a guy's in that learning mode to where he's looking at the field, he's taking his seven on seven snap and some of those things are labeled for him, you know, as he needs to, do, needs to work on some of those things. Uh, or, a, or a, you know, he throws the ball and at the same time that you see the trajectory of his throw, actual throw, you see a somehow calculated, you've got algorithms that, I mean, my, my son does video with a Southeast Conference team, and they had a guy who came in, he'd been a really successful college quarterback, and they figured out the problem was that he threw everything on the same trajectory. If you guys read that after a while, you know, so some kind of virtual reality where he's throwing the ball on the field, and at the same time, you've got GPS, whatever you're doing, so it's showing an ideal arc for that type of pass. If, you're, if that's the type you're thinking about, yeah, really cool. No, but as a, my area really is instructional design. So when we do drill and practice, just like with kids learning math facts, 10 minutes is about the limit. Um, what we'd really like to do is you've got the iPad, you're, you're, you're flying from Seattle to Tampa and you know, guys pass it around, you take your 10 minutes, you take your 10 minutes, you take your 10 minutes. At the end of the day, the coach got, looks and says, what's your name? Alex. Alan? Alex. Alex. Say, you know what? We don't usually bat Alex against right-handers, but he killed on this thing. See, so when coaches start tracking on it, you guys are just using it for practice. He absolutely sees this guy. You know, he sees Chris Archer. I don't know how, why or how, but he sees him like nobody else on the team. Now, that almost starts to get to the area with, which, and certainly in the analytics here for baseball, that would be the last frontier. You're messing with the batting order. Um, the question about uh, research on the psychological values of VR. Unfortunately, there's not. You guys are going to ask a lot better questions than I have answers for because we really need to drive a research agenda that focuses on these things. Again, it's, it's kind of where that, where that person in their development. If, if, if you've got a guy who is struggling a little bit in the confidence department, we'd really want to put him into that. Make him really feel like he's mastered it, not in, a, uh, in an animated one, but that would probably pay off for that because of the emotional. There's so much more emotional part of it. So if you feel like the emotion connects with the, um, the, the, the confidence and what you're trying to put in there, then that probably is a payoff for you. So we don't just assume that more realistic is better, but here's a case where we're saying this guy needs it. I would think that the sports psychologist then would want to could bring in a tool like that and say, Let's teach you how to visualize, because we, we assume we can tell people, well, visualize. Well, that's, a, that's, again, like we were talking about before, that's a high-level cog perceptual cognitive skill, right? I mean, to visualize that, and we don't know how to do it. I talked to Ken Revisa, a well-known um, baseball sports uh, psychologist, and I asked him that same question. I said, how do we know if a guy's visualizing? And, and he said, we really don't have a lot of ways, although the EEG would be an interesting one to bring into that. But he said what he does is he watches their eyeballs that if they're visualizing properly, he feels like he can see their eyeballs moving <laughs> inside their head, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think that I'm, I'm really excited about marrying some of these things together with sports psychology. Now, the thing is that academically, this aspect of sports science, this perceptual cognitive decision science is under sports psychology in the journals and in the conferences and not in the field. My sense is that the shingle out sports psychologists either don't care or don't want to, you know, feel like this would go over too far into the coaching area. But I think the perceptual cognitive, this, the whole perceptual cognitive part of that actually has a better chance coming in through the strength and conditioning people. But I would love to have you be the one to prove that wrong. Uh, 
Um, if we find that the same people who are better at the occlusion, that they can guess those pitches when they can, that they've got, typically experts have fewer, longer fixations. You know, let's see if that theory holds up. Uh, the coaches talk about looking at their insignia, hard and soft focus over to the release point. Do the ones who are good really do that? Johnny Bench talks about, heck, he'd look down here. You know, he said, if the ball, pitcher's throwing you the ball back here, pick it up. But he's a catcher. So is that, would it be different from other people? So questions like this that are, are driven by the science but really savvy to, to the actual sport itself is, is where we need to be. We need to have an agenda to do that, that kind of research to answer your question.